Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Good? Oh, I love that enthusiasm. So he is correct. I did uh, pursue my first degree here in theater. And about two weeks before I started my degree, I um, lost a lot of my hearing. And that Christmas break, I started to get a cochlear implant. But before I get into my story, um, I brought you a video. So I think all of us, or most of us in this room, have seen those awesome videos of babies getting their activations. How many of you have seen that? Oh my goodness, all of you. Well, I brought you another video today. Here we go, it's coming back on. And he's back on again. See how he turns? Hi, Jonathan. Stop the sucking. Yeah. Hi. That's good. That's Could you real good. hear that? <laughs> Hi, okay. sweetie. Could you hear that? <laughs> Hi. I absolutely love those videos. Don't you guys like watching those videos whenever you're just having a bad day? I mean, that, for me, that is my favorite kind of video. Those videos to me are just so empowering because those videos, they remind me of journey. They remind me of things that the patients have been through. We've all had to go to the doctor. We all know what it's like to deal with health insurance. For these, these videos signify what it's like for the patient to have completed the journey of getting insurance activate or getting insurance approval and getting that surgery done. And then finally getting that activation and experiencing that moment for hearing for the first time. I got my cochlear implant activated on um, January 5th of 2011, and I got to experience that for myself as well. Typically, a cochlear implant can cost between $90,000 and $110,000 per ear. You heard that correct. That was per ear. And sometimes insurance will pay for it. A lot of times, the insurance will pay will vary. But that's the situation we're talking about today. So what is a cochlear implant? Where, what are we talking about? Well, if you break down the words, we're talking about implanting a cochlea. But before today, you may or may, not know, may, may or may not have known where the cochlea is. Well, the cochlea is within the inner ear. So if you talk about the ear, you talk about the outside of the ear, ladies, where you get your ears pierced, that would be the outer ear. And the outer ear funnels sound into the middle ear, which then sends sound further into the inner ear where the cochlea resides. The cochlea is about the size of a green pea you know, the vegetable that nobody likes to eat. But if you think about it, the cochlea is very small, and that's where those hair cells are. Those are the hair cells that everybody talks about whenever they say you don't want to damage your hair cells. Whenever I was graduate teaching a class here at the University of Oklahoma, I had this sweet little student come up to me, and she was very nervous because she went to a concert, and she was nervous that she was going to destroy the hairs in her ear. She thought she was talking about the hairs that were poking out like an old man. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about hairs in your cochlea. These are very deep. And the cochlea, which is indicated on this picture for you, that is where we're talking about when we're talking about implanting somebody. So how do we find out if someone even needs a cochlear implant, or even hearing aids for that matter? Well, we look at an audiogram. Some of you may have seen this before. I oftentimes refer to this as a graph of hearing. So I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of putting some pictures on there of some familiar sounds for you. We've got a water faucet. We've got a bird that looks remarkably like Twitter. We've got a jackhammer at the bottom. And we've also got the pride of Oklahoma down at the bottom as well. These are all familiar sounds, and that's where they're mapped on the audiogram. You'll notice that some louder sounds are at the bottom, and then some of the quieter sounds are at the top. At the top, that's where normal hearing patients should really strive to be. Patients who need a cochlear implant will not be at the top. I've gone ahead and shaded that area green. If you take a hearing test, that's a full hearing test, and you're in the green area, you are going to be considered normal hearing. But as you get further and further down the graph, we're talking about more and more severe hearing loss. So I went ahead and described um, on, the le on your left side of the graph, you'll be able to hear that there's gonna be lower pitches, and then on the right side of gr the graph, there's gonna be higher pitches. And I brought to you some sounds today. <laughs> That would be a lower pitch, and then this is higher. That is piercing, isn't it? You don't even need your coffee anymore, but that is, typically some of the, that is typically some of the sounds we're talking about whenever we're testing hearing in patients. We'll go through and we'll map them out on the graph, and then we'll find out where people are located as far as where they can hear them on the graph. 
So this was my audiogram before I got my cochlear implant. You'll see that I'm much further down than what than the green shaded area. So I was practicing for this TED talk and I was and they kept saying you're not explaining the cochlea well. You're not explaining it. So what do you guys do whenever you're having a hard time, maybe in a class, or maybe you're having a hard time? Well, I know what I do, I go get ice cream. And so I was sitting there and I'm trying to be healthier, you know, gotta get that summer bod going. And so I went, <laughs> look at me, <laughs> gotta get the summer bod. And so I went to get frozen yogurt. We all know it's healthier. And so <laughs> I went to get the frozen yogurt and as I was pouring it, if you do it the right way, you're supposed to swirl it, are you not? Thank you. And so as you're swirling the frozen yogurt, you swirl it, and then as you swirl it, it gets higher, just as the picture indicates. Well, in the cochlea, each part of the swirl in the cochlea represents a different frequency. So the biggest swirl, that's the bottom of the cup, that's gonna represent a really high-pitched frequency. And that's also where we're talking about whenever patients who have cochlear implants, they hear those higher-pitched frequencies very well. At the very top, that tip where it's curving, those are the very low pitch frequency. They're the very low pitch time that we, you just heard. So whenever they insert the electrode array, we're talking about them inserting at the base of the cup. We're talking about patients, that's the entrance point for the electrode array, and that's where patients are able to hear higher pitches easier. So I tend to hear my mother's voice a little bit easier than I hear my father's voice, essentially. And so that is what we're looking at. I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of highlighting 200 hertz for you because 200 hertz is at the very, very top of that ice cream cone. It's also at the top of the um, cochlea. And so that is sometimes a harder frequency for patients with cochlear implants to hear. So what are we talking about whenever we talk about cochlear implants? Well, we have the internal portion, which is the portion that you shouldn't be able to see, and then you have the external portion. Well, the internal portion feeds into the cochlea via the box that I just displayed for you, and that feeds into that conal shape, and it goes up into the cochlea. And then the external portion, which is the portion that a lot of you can see on me today, just rests on the ear. They are connected by a magnet, and that magnet is able to communicate with each other. They are not, there's no hole in my skin, and there's um, no, any type of abrasions or anything, there's no pain whenever I wear it. When you get surgery, typically the surgery lasts about two to three hours, and then after you get surgery, you can get activated, which is what you saw with that baby. You can get activated about a month later. So this is an example of my audiogram after I got my cochlear implant activated. This is where I was before I got my implant activated. You can see how much improvement I exhibited. I am completely within normal ranges with the push of a button on a, co on a computer. It's amazing technology that we've developed here. This is really some awesome stuff that we have. So I brought you guys my video to see. Do you guys want to see it? Yeah? yeah? All right. Be real soft at first, really soft, because I don't want it to be too loud, okay? So we'll just slowly turn it up. And I'll just say one, two, three, one, two, three, as we turn it up. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah. Oh, wow. What does it sound, sound, what does it sound like? Is it high pitched? Yeah. <laughs> you sound like Donald Duck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like Donald I always laugh at this video because in the video you hear a woman say, What does that sound like? And I always think it's funny because my mom is asking her deaf son what something sounds like. <laughs> but. In my mother's defense, I don't know if you guys have heard before, but sometimes cochlear implants can have a different sound quality to them because we are introducing an electrical signal into the cochlea. And sometimes those can take on a Donald Duck or a Mickey Mouse sound quality to them. And so whenever I got my cochlear implant activated, it took time for me to even realize that a sound was occurring. So once the sound came in, my speech pathologist had to even point out that a sound was occurring. So to give you an example, um, I was sitting in therapy and a baby in the next room started talking and she, um, I'm sorry, a baby in the next room started crying, not talking, that would be weird. Uh, <laughs> a baby in the next room started crying and she, um, the speech pathologist pointed out, she said, do you, do you hear that? Do you hear the crying? And it took me a second 
and I had to start associating the physical sensation that I was getting on my cochlear implant. I had to start associating that with what I was feeling. And so we all went home and I finished my therapy and my mom went back to work and everybody went home and um, I went to the restroom. And if you realize my thresholds were down where the jackhammer was and what kind of sound happens in a bathroom that's not as loud as a jackhammer? You flush a toilet. And let me just say, folks, I was hearing sounds and normal sounds, and had I not just gone to the restroom after I flushed that toilet, there would have been a mistake. And <laughs> so life really changed a lot for me once I got my cochlear implant activated. I mean, we're talking about I wasn't even really sure if I was going to finish college. I definitely didn't think I was going to be able to come to grad school and pursue my dream of doing audiology. And everything that I was gonna get to stand up here on a TEDx stage and talk to you guys, I would have never believed something like that. So I thank all of you for allowing me to come here and share my passion and my dreams with you, and I hope you have a great day.